Okay, this is for Safari647. You're helping your family member who's staying with you in the in London um, for a week or, or two. So, right, so I, I think the best, one of the best training opportunities is not, it's not somewhere where, where he goes per se, but it's something that you can help him create and this mindset that you can help him create that anywhere that he is can be a training ground and and by bringing a few tools with him and helping him either th think about getting them or showing him the possibilities of what it could be like, you know, you, you could completely help him shift his mindset where he's not necessarily seeking seeking out training opportunities, but he realizes that, okay, everywhere I am can be a place where I'm getting world-class touches and, you know, doing world-class training and they don't, you know, these tools don't have to be expensive, right? In my mind that if he carries these three tools on him, he can train smarter and more effectively than, you know, almost anyone his age at 18 year old, because no one's really thinking, no one's really thinking like this. I mean, a few people are, but n not like this. Um, okay, so let's start. So the first thing that, that he, I, you know, I bet, I bet 90, 97% that he's not using is an RMT rope. And the reason why this is so powerful is because your body's connected from fingers to toes. So all that means is that when you start to swing this rope, right, you start to swing it around and acts like a metronome. A metronome is a tool that musicians use to keep a rhythm, right, a tempo. So, right, so I noticed personally that when I started using this RMT rope, I, I noticed I started my juggling improved. And since my juggling improved, my passing improved, my shooting improved, like everything on the field started improving just by swinging this rope around because it helps you bend and twist your spine. It improves your running mechanics. Um, it improves your balance. It's gonna help you prevent injuries. It improves your explosiveness because you could start to whip your arms down and pop your knee up. So for all those reasons, right, this thing costs, it's just the length of rope as long as you are tall soft soft piece of rope and if you can just check out your local hardware store and get some soft rope then boom you could make an rmt rope the inventor says if you want to learn if you could only learn one pattern you gotta learn the alternating underhand sneak which looks like this and there's a lot of tutorials online but i you know i guarantee you that this is something that he's not using on his day on his daily basis that will completely transform his game and you could bring it everywhere you go right it's like having a soccer gym in your pocket for for less than 10 bucks. So I'm telling you, it's hard to articulate the benefits, but you got to feel it. I, the, you, you, once you start swinging, you're going to feel the power. So, and even for you, if you start to, um, if you show him how it works and you kind of get a handle on it before he comes and you can change his life by, by first, by first learning and then you'll be able to teach him more effectively instead of just saying hey I think this will help you he'll say oh okay it's like and then you know it flies over his head he, he has to see it and then because right and show him this video because he'll see how how there's a connection and this this um, dynamic movement he'll start to be able to appreciate if he has a simple tool right tools can transform training because like similar to in a kitchen Right? If a chef has a crock pot or a chef has a certain type of knife, they just make, it makes things easier and they make, they make, they allow you, they unlock abilities that you couldn't do without the tool. So this is, in my opinion, one of the most um, underrated soccer training tools on earth. So uh, search how to make an RMT rope and there's going to be a lot of resources to check out. That's one. Number two. You know, assuming he's a high level player, I think most high level players don't use kick trainers for whatever reason. And you know, clubs like AC Milan, Ajax, Sevilla, all encourage their players to use kick trainers. And it's, right, it's just a ball and a rope. But the beauty is that you could cram months of training into days or weeks. So, you know, let's say he can't get to a, to, to his, to a high level club. Right, like the chances that he has the opportunity to play for a high level club that just lets him in the front door and it just works out time wise, you know, that would be great, but maybe, you know, not the highest chances. 
but the chance that you could find him or that he could help him make a kick trainer with a size one ball and a length of rope or just order one from Amazon, right? This is 24 bucks SKLZ solo kick trainer. And in 10 to 15 minutes of using this thing while walking around England, he can get, you know, in, in, in 10 to 15 minutes, you could get 1200 touches if you're getting one touch, if you're getting one touch every second, right? So, so, you know, I brought, the, I brought this thing to France and walking around in Paris, France, I must have got between 6,000 and 8,000 touches effortlessly. So it's not about working hard and beating your body up. It's about being very relaxed and working on that precision of your touch, your striking technique, and just being, and being present. Right, so this is a tool that's really gonna help him improve his timing, his rhythm, his coordination, and make it so that um, you could start to show him unlock his ability to turn anywhere he is in the world into his own, right? It's gonna allow him with some of these tools to make just a soccer gym. And no one's really thinking like this, right? This perpetual, this perpetual play. Um, so, right, this is an SKLZ solo kick trainer. I can't recommend it enough. Or just make one yourself. Size one ball, a length of rope, as long as your hip to your ankle, and then maybe put a knot on the end. So uh, that's the second tool. Third tool is uh, a size one ball or a tennis ball. Right, a size one or size tennis ball is just gonna give him the ability, if he starts to carry it around him, with him everywhere he goes, to take a soccer vacation. All that means is that he's gonna get more touches everywhere he goes because portability is the key. If he has a size one ball or a size two ball that he can dribble while walking or just bring it all around, then it's gonna create less practice friction, less training friction. If he could bring a ball everywhere, then he could get more touches. More touches leads to more mistakes. More mistakes leads to more learning, right? He's gonna have a deeper awareness of where the ball's gonna go when he strikes it because he's gonna develop a deeper relationship from all the repetitions. So, and if he could do this in a relaxed way, then, you know, it's like just a game of touches. It's like, a player who's getting a hundred touches a week versus a player who's getting thousands of touches a week in a relaxed way. It's like, who, who's going to get better, right? So, um, you know, I think there's, there's, there might come to a, a place of overtraining, but that usually doesn't happen until, you know, players are maybe not getting enough sleep and then they're going from like, like they have a whole week and it's just practice, practice, like games, practice, game, practice with no rest. But I don't think, right, if he's coming to visit you and he's got some, some time off, then, then having him shift his mindset to where he could be relaxed, breathing and getting great touches, juggling, dribbling, using that RMT rope, using that kick trainer. It's like a, it's like a, a Zen approach to soccer playing and training that I think he could start to embrace. And then you could start to do rotations of these things, right? Like a few minutes juggling, a few minutes dribbling, then a few minutes with the kick trainer, a few minutes with the RMT rope, and then start to rotate from one to the other. And then, you know, you could start to accumulate thousands of touches in a day effortlessly, and the body can still be feeling um, really good, right? Not beating, not, not being beat down by training, right? So, um, Hopefully some of these things help. Hopefully some of these tools help him grow his game. And the last thing I would, I would have him search is, search How to Breathe by Dr. Vranich, V-R-A-N-I-C-H, because you know breathing isn't taught to a lot of youth players and it's probably one of the most important skills that they can learn. And it's changed my life, her, her TED Talk. So search How to Breathe, Dr. Vranich, V-R-A-N-I-C-H. Last but not least, I think, the shoes that he wears, it may seem like a small factor, but right, if certain shoes make you weaker and certain shoes make you stronger, just putting yourself in a shoe that makes you stronger can really prevent against sore feet, prevent against injuries, and strengthen, strengthen your feet so where you're more explosive, you're more balanced, right? We spend so much time in our beds and in our shoes. If you could buy a pair of minimalist shoes, my, new, my current favorite pair are Glurups, but you also have companies like 
zeroshoes.com that really has high quality shoes that don't look like goofy minimalist shoes. Um, so I think that's that's something to consider because if he has, if he's wearing a shoe that has a thick sole that cons constricts the feet the foot's ability to spread out, um, then he's just he's just sabotaging his own foot health. And feet are so important. Healthy feet are important for soccer players. So I'll leave you with that. So reach out with any questions, and um, I hope some of these ideas help. All right, thank you.